six years old. This was the bestest Christmas ever. It snowed really hard. Me and Daddy took a walk in it. When we came home, Daddy picked me up really high so I could put the star on top of the tree. We had lots of fun on Christmas. That is actually from the opening of the Christmas sweater, the uh, play that I did with a live uh, orchestra and everything, and it is going to be seen in movie theaters next December 3rd. That is Wednesday, uh, next Thursday night, and I invite you to um, be there. It's an incredible thing to see. Um, one of the messages that I've been trying to get out this year is that no one is um, too big to fail, and everybody wants to look at the big guy when we are supposed to be looking inside at the little guy, and we are each other lifeboats. Nobody should take money from somebody else and give it to somebody. We should want to help each other. That's what America and I think that's what I think that's what this whole season is supposed to be about is to give because we want not because it's taken from us. A few years ago I read a book called The Christmas Jars. I picked it up. It was um, uh, the shortest book I could find. and I was, It was a weekend, and I read it. I talked about it on the air, and I actually, I didn't talk about it. I raved about it the following Monday, and it is something that we have started. It started a tradition in my own family, a Christmas jar. Guy who wrote it, I didn't know him, the guy who wrote it actually <clears throat> called me and said, Oh my gosh, I'm the author. You read my book? I did. It's fantastic. Up about now five years, Jason, is that right? That's right. Jason Wright, welcome to the program. The author of The Christmas Jars and also now co-author of um, last year's number one New York Times bestseller, The Christmas Sweater. Good book. Um, <laughs> thanks to you. Okay, so The Christmas Jar, um, this is the first book and now out in stores, if you're a fan of The Christmas Jars, this is the sequel and if you wondered what happened, it's The Christmas Jars Reunion. These are, you can read these in two sittings, and they're fantastic, and I recommend that you read them with your family. Sit down and read them with your family, um, because if you've, if you've got kids that are, what, mm, over 10, probably can really understand this, and it would be a great thing to read with your family. Tell me quickly the story, because I want to get to the tradition. Absolutely. The story is very simple. A young newspaper reporter just out of college stumbles across this very mysterious and magical tradition of the Christmas jar. And she makes it her goal, her mission, to write a front page story revealing the origin of the tradition. She wants to expose, not in a bad light, but in a good light, where the tradition might have originated. And when she finally discovers the origin, and she writes that story, and that story lands on the front page of the paper, she has a very special reunion at the end of the book with someone she couldn't have imagined, imagined she would ever see again. And the whole thing sort of comes full circle. And I think that's what you liked about and it. And then the, uh, um, uh, the reunion is the sequel because everybody, you finish the book and you're like, okay, well, well what happened? What happened? What, what's next? So this is real quick in a nutshell what it's two years later the tradition is now blown up in their community hope has become sort of the the minister of this tradition it's in fact she calls it the christmas jar ministry jar is being given away everywhere and she becomes obsessed with a really big number a thousand and one jars that she wants to personally be responsible for giving away and i think she loses sight of the magic that it's really about one jar not necessarily so, a million in other words it's she's gotten down the too big to fail road and yeah, there you okay. go. Um, and what was the line I heard? I heard you say you said it on the radio program today that it's one jar. What is it? One one jar, one birth, one savior. That's the most important thing to remember about the holiday. Okay. So when we come back, this is actually, and I don't know if you saw in my lunchroom today, you were over at my radio studios. I did. Did you see that? I did. On top of the microwave, we have our Christmas jar. It's been a tradition in my office. It's a tradition in my home, um, and it is. It is something that I encourage you to do, and it's not too late to do it. We'll explain it here in just a second. To really make a difference and connect with the real meaning of Christmas. Next. Before my dad died, we never thought about money. I mean, it wasn't that we were rich, but we weren't poor either, you know? We just were. We had a nice house. We had a hot dinner every night. We even went to Disneyland once, and I remember we got all dressed up for the airplane ride. We never, we never really wanted for anything, except perhaps for a little more time together. That's from the performance that you will see um, live from New York on December 3rd in movie theaters all across the country. You can go to glenbeck.com uh, for all of the details. Um, 
I want to talk to you about the Christmas Jars reunion, um, and author Jason Wright is here. The Christmas Jars um, uh, tradition is what exactly? Very simple. You take an empty jar, pickle yep. jar, a mayonnaise jar, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big it is, and you just dedicate your spare change to it each and every day. You don't need to write a really big check. You don't need to drop a $100 bill in it. It's your spare change, and that little act of daily sacrifice every day filling up that jar eventually accumulates into a pretty tidy sum of money to give away to someone anonymously right. on Christmas Eve. Now, I do. A, we, we all have one in my house. Um, I have one in my closet. Everybody has a Christmas jar, and we fill it up, and, um, and then um, we go and put it on somebody's doorstep. Uh, the week of Christmas anonymously, we just, you know, it, it's great fun for the kids to be able to try to sneak it up to the house yeah. and, and leave it there. Um, but if you haven't started your Christmas jar at the beginning of the year, I think people would say, well, okay, that would be a good tradition to start next year. That's right. I hear that a lot, and that's, that's not true. Go right now, as soon as the program's over, find a jar, fill it up. Between now and Christmas, what have we got? Still four or five weeks? Yeah. Uh, cheat a little bit if you have to. Go to the bank, get $20 for the quarters. Um, to the right family in need, $20, 30 40 $50 may not seem like a lot of money to you, but to a family who's just been, maybe dad's been laid off, maybe it's a single mom with a couple of kids, has no idea how she's going to afford to be able to put even one thing under the tree for Christmas, let alone some extravagant kind of Christmas that they don't need, but one thing with their name on it, $20, 30 40 $50 in a Christmas jar given anonymously to them could change their Christmas, could in fact change their life and they will pay for I will tell you that um, America, I, I um, next week I'll share with you um, a story about the hardest Christmas that I had with my kids. It was the year that I was flat broke. It was the year that I got my daughter a bell. Um, and actually, I mean, I found myself shopping at CVS, the drugstore, for Christmas, and I was so low. Um, I remember that Christmas. I also remember the Christmas we did the Christmas jars. Um, that first Christmas we did it, I remember my kids were still small enough where they were just wired. They couldn't wait. And we got out in the middle of the night and we parked the car a couple blocks away and then we snuck up to the house and the kids ran with the jar. I was afraid they were going to drop it, it was going to break, and then they'd be broken glass and then would be a lawsuit. And, but that didn't happen. And I remember so vividly how great it was. Please, begin to start new traditions. This is Christmas Jars Reunion. It is the sequel to the Christmas Jars. You'll find it in bookstores everywhere. It is a fantastic book and a fantastic um, tradition. Jason Wright. Thank you. And if you give a jar away or you get a jar, will you please visit my website and tell me your story? I'd love to hear them. I'd love to share them with other people. Website folks. is? ChristmasJars.com. Got it. Back in a second. Thank you.